Israel has claimed to have killed Hezbollah's most senior military commander in its strike on Lebanon's capital, Beirut. At least three people were killed in the Israeli strike targeting the Hezbollah commander, according to Lebanese health ministry. As for reports, two children and a woman were killed in the strike and at least 74 people were injured. The Israeli defense forces have said that the attack killed Fuad Shukr, the most senior Hezbollah military commander. IDF says he was the right-hand man to Hassan Nasrallah. Hezbollah and Lebanese authorities have not yet confirmed the death. He was a senior terrorist who was the blood, who has the blood of the Israelis and many others on his hands. One day after Hamas massacre on October 7th, Hezbollah joined Hamas in attacking Israelis. Since then, Hezbollah has fired thousands of rockets, missiles, and UAVs at Israel over the last nine and a half months, killing Israeli civilians and soldiers, and forcing 60,000, 60,000 Israelis to evacuate from their homes. The IDF has maintained that Israel isn't looking for war, but it is prepared for it. The strike came after a rocket attack in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights that killed 12 children. Israel blames Hezbollah for the attack, but the group has denied that it was behind the strike. The United States has backed Israel's retaliation. Washington has asserted that its commitment to Israel's security is ironclad and unwavering against all Iran-backed threats, including Hezbollah. Vice President Kamala Harris has also said that she unequivocally supports Israel's right to defend itself. The Iranian embassy in uh, Lebanon has denounced the Israeli strike on Beirut, calling it cowardly and sinful Israeli aggression that claimed the lives of a number of martyrs. The Iran-backed Houthis and Hamas militant groups have also condemned the strike and declared solidarity with Lebanon. UN Special Coordinator has expressed concern over the strike, saying that there is no such thing as a military solution. In a statement, she has called on both Israel and Lebanon to explore all diplomatic avenues to return to the cessation of hostilities. This attack is now the largest Israeli escalation against Hezbollah since tensions erupted on October 8th. Remember, the last time Israel struck the Lebanese capital was in January when it killed a senior figure for Hamas. With Israel vowing to punish Hezbollah for the Golan strike and both Hezbollah and Iran warning Netanyahu fears of an all-out conflict are at all-time high right now. Now, for more on this, so we are being joined by our correspondent Jody Cohen on the phone line with us. Thank you for joining us. What is the latest that you can give us? So we're hearing the sound of planes going over ahead. This is following the explosion in the Hezbollah stronghold in Beirut, where the target was senior Hezbollah commander Fuad Shuka. Now, the IDF has confirmed the strike and said that the commander was a senior advisor to Hezbollah head Hassan Nasrallah, that he sat on the Jihad Council, Hezbollah's top military body, and was behind the attack at Majd al-Shams, which, uh, remember, killed 12 children and injured dozens more children who were playing or watching soccer. Now, Hezbollah has claimed that Shuka survived the attack, although Saudi news is reporting that he was struck. There are no changes of instructions to Israeli civilians, but we are likely to expect a Hezbollah response at some point. And remember, an anonymous Lebanese official had said that Hezbollah was moving some of its precision, smart precision guided missiles to use if necessary. Now, the Lebanese foreign minister has urged Hezbollah a to carry out a proportionate response. The Biden administration has said that Israel has every right to respond to the deadly Hezbollah attack. They had suggested the fears of an all-out war between Hezbollah and Israel were exaggerated. Israel has said it doesn't want to see a war, but it does want Hezbollah to stop the rockets and to retreat to the Litani River, which is the UN-recognized boundary between Lebanon and Israel. 
Uh, Hamas, the Houthis, Iran and Russia have all condemned Israel for this strike and it remains to be seen if we might see a further response from Israel and also how Hezbollah would respond. This is Jody Cohen for We On World Is One. Uh, thank you, Jody, for, joining, for the latest. Now, we're also being joined by Adrian Kamil. He's a fellow at Arabian Peninsula Institute and Middle Eastern scholar. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Um, we had you uh, last time, a few days ago, we had you on the show, and we were talking about and asked you about if this is an escalation. Are we looking at an escalation, or what comes next? Thank you for having me back. Um, are we looking at an escalation? Well, the ball really sits in Hezbollah's court right now. I believe that the message from Israel today was very strong. Uh, it was, we can hit you in Dahia, which is the Hezbollah stronghold. I mean, that is basically going into their backyard and taking them out. And then we also need to look at the individual that was taken out. Fuad Shukar is, uh, he was responsible, one of the architects between the 1980, behind the 1983 Marine Barracks bombing, which killed 241 Americans. Uh, the other individuals that were involved with him in that, uh, Mustafa Badruddin and Imad Munia, they're both dead. They've both been eliminated. Fuad Shukar is um, uh, a vic, he's probably second in command. Uh, he's running the whole Southern Lebanon file. He's running the show as far as attacks against Israel from that northern border right now. So it's a message from Israel saying, we can get you where we want you. And they've demonstrated this before, not just in Lebanon, but in the Islamic Republic, uh, when they hit, um, they assassinated a nuclear scientist. Um, so it shows their cap capabilities, strong intelligence, and um, yeah, we'll take people out if you push us to this level. Now, the hope is that the message Israel wants to send, in my estimation, is that do not bring those precision guided missiles forward. That is an escalation that is going to bring about uh, disastrous consequences. Talking of the escalation now, this is going to be the second front, but um, Netanyahu has said that he can go out for an all-out war. But do you think Israel at this point, there is also the Gaza that's, that's happening. Do you think Israel is ready to go for a second front? No, I, I don't. And that's a great question. I don't believe they're ready to go for a second front. Where you, If we're talking about a second front, we're talking about ground troops, if, if that's what we're talking about as far as the second troop, as far as moving in, pushing Hezbollah back south of Latani, as they're required to under uh, the um, you know UN Security Council's Resolution 1701. Um, but I think we also have to recognize that this is not just one front that they have been fighting, the Israelis. Uh, since October 8th, Hezbollah has been firing rockets the Houthis, they've got attacks coming from Iraq, or attacks coming from Gaza, Lebanon, Syria. So it's a multi-front war that is really difficult to manage. Um, also, the U.S. has called for a diplomatic solution, and we know that they have been meeting with the Qatari officials and Egyptian officials for a ceasefire talks. How does that stand right now after all this tit-for-tat um, escalation between um, Lebanon and Israel? Well, let me put it this way. The last time we had a major diplomatic effort that led to the UN Security Council Resolution 1701, which required Hezbollah to dis disarm and withdraw from south of Latani, they did not meet those requirements. They never have. Uh, and UNIFIL, the UN agency that was supposed to be there, to enforce these rules so that Hezbollah cannot do this, so they cannot open up a front and start a war against Israel, um, has been allowed to grow in strength. And uh, this is a really a failure of what I see, the diplomatic community, uh, to address this. Uh, you put forward a diplomatic solution, but then there needs to be co some co concrete steps to make sure that the objectives are being met, and they were never met. Right, Adrian Kelmo, thank you for joining us um, and giving you your insight. We'll look at how this all pans out, but thank you so much for giving your insights. Thank you for having me again.